Hey everybody, this is Tony. And this is Paul, and we are headed out on the road for the Friends for Life podcast world tour. So let's hop in the car and get going. Well, Ken, you're out here with Ability Tech doing some cool stuff with robots. I'm impressed. I saw that thing. I was wondering if you're giving out free samples with that robot, but you know, it, it, I'm not sure I want to steal uh, candy from the people coming out here to visit. So, <laughs> so uh, you got a lot of cool technology. Yep. Uh, what made you want to get involved with this stuff? Uh, well, it's, it's actually... Uh... <laughs> So I am not from this space. Uh, a lot of people you you can talk to here, they started out as DSPs or um, uh, they've got family members that yep. uh, have been affected somehow. Uh, that's not me. I'm an, I'm an engineer turned insurance agent. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and somehow, some way through some weird set of circumstances stumbled into this space about... 2011, 2012, somewhere in, in that area. Wow. And um, unintentionally, I wasn't even, my plans weren't even to be working within the IDD space. It was actually uh, with security systems. Mm -hmm. And um, through the company that I was uh, represented at the time, they were also dabbling in this idea of remote supports. And the more I got to know about that service and what it was doing, um, the more I decided that I wanted to be a part of it and, and just kind of take it over, if you will. So your engineering background, uh, I'm assuming that must help with technology. Well, it, and, yeah, and it does. Base. Yeah, it does. It's, um, uh, in a sense of problem solving, I think is probably the biggest uh, piece that, that comes from mm -hmm. that. Uh, so I had designed machines for several years and then I became a, a sales engineer. And okay. a big part of what I did was I would work in these factories and I'd, I'd find out what they needed and, mm -hmm. and I'd try to find a solution for it. Um, and so it was that problem solving tools and skill set that when I stepped into this space, it, it was, a, it seemed like a natural fit. Mm -hmm. We're looking for we're looking at the individual's needs and that's where I always start with any conversation about a specific individual is, well, uh, I kind of start with why do they have staff in the first place? Mm -hmm. It's because I want to get an understanding of what it is that they need, um, what the concerns are, whether they're, uh, as I like to put it, whether those concerns are hysterical or historical gotcha. in nature. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, try to try to figure out how can we put everybody, uh, uh, set everybody's peace of mind mm -hmm. so that um, we can introduce some type of technology within, within that person's uh, use that will help them be more independent? Um, it, it, there's, there's nothing quite like you were mentioning the, that feeding robot that I brought today. Um, there's nothing quite as gratifying as seeing somebody take a bite that they control for the first time in their life or maybe the first time in years where they've, they've been able to, you know, by operating a, a simple switch and then they can bring that food up, they can take that bite on their own. And uh, just the dignity that comes from that, um, the joy that uh, is on their face when they're able to do something like that is just, it's, it's worth it all. And that's really why I stuck in this space yeah. is yeah. I, I kind of got sucked into it um, because <laughs> I saw an opportunity to impact people's lives in a way that um, you just, you can't do on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, I'm, as I was sitting and looking at that, there are individuals that I service that I know that that would be an amazing addition to their life. Mm -hmm. How... How is the cost go? Does it go back on the consumer? And like, does Ability Tech work with the waiver system, or are you guys more just like a tech tech technological hub? And you like do? I'm sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> okay. I'm used to this. You're just I'm doing a podcast. Yeah, it's not a problem. Like words are not needed. <laughs> but like, do you guys work with vendors, or is it more um, a status quo for your own company? Yeah, so it's interesting because just recently, um, I was a uh, waiver certified assistive technology okay. um, provider in the state of Ohio, and just recently 
decided not to be anymore. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, it was intentional in the sense that I never wanted Ability Tech to be a vendor because I wanted to be able to come into the conversation unbiased. Got you. Um, and so just kind of put a little context in place is mm -hmm. I started Ability Tech um, at the end of 2019. Um, some interesting things happened yeah. at the beginning of 2020. I remember those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the purpose of Ability Tech was to teach providers. It was really to move the needle forward in utilization of technology. And a big part of that was to teach providers to adopt assistive technology as one of those things that they were going to provide mm -hmm. as, as a vendor, to be their own vendor. Be their own, yeah. um, there's not enough vendors that are providing this service. Um, those few who do have, have, many of them have recently decided not to. They focus mainly, mainly sorry, I can't speak yeah. either. <laughs> Um, they, they focus mainly on remote supports and not as much on the assistive technology. And there's, there's some reasons, some justifiable reasons for that. And so I feel like there's a need for the local provider to become more and more educated on that. And at the time I felt, yeah, it's a little bit of a conflict of interest for me to also be a waiver provider if I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. COVID came along. I kind of had to pivot like Chubby Checker, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, I had to go back to what everybody knew me as, which is the tech guy. Mm. And so I did that um, for for the past several years as assistive tech provider, uh, primarily just to get through those times. Right. But since then, <clears throat> um, I've been able to become busy enough on the consulting end where I'm working with um, county boards. Uh, I've worked with uh, Ohio State Nice Songer Center doing consulting, um, work with a couple provider agencies uh, within ICF settings and within uh, uh, building smart homes and stuff like that for demonstration purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, and then recently I actually uh, just uh, uh, entered into a contract with uh, DODD to be their um, tech first consultant. Gosh, and uh, part of that, a big part of that is uh, um, to assess their developmental centers as well as um, look at new ways where where the department can work towards adopting. And I'm hoping that part of that effort can be in getting more and more providers to do assistive technology themselves. Definitely. Well, well the one thing I was just going to say that kind of a point that we've been hitting on a lot at, at this event specifically, even today, is I love watching when people come from the outside of this this universe of the DD world mm -hmm. and there is every single opportunity to create any kind of business that you would make anywhere else in the world mm -hmm. in this industry mm -hmm. and I think people think what, when they think disabilities they think government funded waivers everything's <clears throat> coming pay. Like, mm -hmm. there's so many people here doing so many new business ideas that are a helping people mm -hmm. and b you know just like being insanely innovative and yeah. I think that's so awesome. Do you have any advice for anyone anywhere who doesn't think that they can make it in this field? I would say there's so much space. Oh, there's there's a ton of space, and, and as we, um, so to kind of put things into perspective, Ohio leads the nation, and I, I know this because I, I operate outside of Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, they lead the nation in um, in remote supports and in assistive technology um, implementation, and yet we have just scratched the, the surface. surface. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, to give you an example, so we've been doing this since I think it's 2011, where Ohio from the very top levels down has really been heavily promoting things like remote sports. Mm -hmm. We have around 50,000 waivers in Ohio. We still only have about 1,100 people receiving remote sports. It, you know, so it may not seem like there's opportunity there, but put yeah. in that perspective is every other state in the union is starting to adopt that as a service model. And as we, as it becomes more and more uh, commonplace, it'll be more readily acceptable to uh, to the families as the fam as the younger families um, grow and get are more familiar with technology, mm -hmm. they're going to also become more accepting of this type of uh, tool or, or service model. Right. And so there's going to be a tremendous amount of demand 
and there already is a tremendous amount of demand yeah. for this. And in some cases, it's just a matter of um, the system itself recognizing that uh, that they need to adopt this. I think it, you know we thought that back um, back when COVID happened the anticipation was that the people were just going to flock to services like remote yeah. sports. <laughs> yeah. Their numbers were just going to go through the roof and it didn't happen. No. And, and the way I believe and this is just my, my opinion is what happened is we had something similar to somebody who's in a shipwreck mm -hmm. and they're out in the ocean and they've got a piece of wood they're hanging on to and they can see land out in the distance but they don't want to let go oh, of what yeah. they have in their hand <laughs> yeah. long enough to swim to shore. Um, but now they've reached a point now, I think, where they're like, okay, I, I, I can't continue floating around like this. I have to. Yeah. Or they've been holding their breath all these, these several years, mm -hmm. and now they're just like, I've got to take a breath. And, I've, and so now is the time where... Um, we have uh, we have such a huge demand, and now it's becoming more and more acceptable. The other thing that I think we that people need to recognize that are in the tech industry, and if I could speak specifically to them, is everything. Well, I shouldn't say everything. Many of the devices that have been designed have actually been designed primarily for the senior industry. Mm -hmm. And um, on a business level, if we want to just talk business dollars and cents level, you're missing the boat. Um, there is. There's a couple different things that that this space has that, and I'm not saying get into the space just because of these reasons. We mm -hmm. want people to have the right heart. All right. Gotcha. Um, but if we want to look at this from the business level, we got to recognize that the senior market does not typically have a funding piece for it, mm -hmm. and so so that's one of the challenges that they keep running into. The second challenge they run into is um, by the time somebody who is a senior reaches the point where they could benefit from some of these technologies, they're too close to either entering into a nursing home or some type of assisted living setting or too close to end of life. And so they're going, only going to utilize this technology for a sh very short period of time. Correct. We're talking to people who are young who are 19, 20 years old, transitioning into adulthood, and they're going to utilize this services throughout their entire life. May even help adapt it for yeah, and their help, use. help help us. And so if we could get more technologists into this space who could design, the challenge we run into is it's designed for use cases that we're not experiencing typically. And so if we could get technologists to, to design things for this industry specifically, that's really what we need a lot of is, is that type of innovation that they're willing to put the time in, put the effort in uh, to something that, that will have a very good return for them business-wise. Well, and talk about, you know, uh, uh, if, so, if someone likes a challenge, talk, what a place to do it. And every yeah. single person is different. Every single person is going to have different needs. There's so many pieces of technology that you could create for just so many different people. Like if you love to, to twist your brain, and I mean, where else could you go there? You have unlimited access to being able to help people a and work on stuff that you never dreamed of. Like yeah. the thought of Absolutely. me doing this right now in the DD field never crossed my mind. And like, yeah. I like still, I'm like, I can't believe this is what I do for my job. Like, it's, <laughs> it's insane. You know what I'm saying? So, well, before we wrap up here, yeah. I know you got people waiting in there that want to talk to you. So we don't want to keep you all day as much as we'd love to. Um, so where can people learn more about ability tech? Uh, what's your website? If you're on social media, let them know about that and anything you're excited about working on that maybe you want to share yeah. with the world. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm the worst social media presence ever. No, I am. <laughs> Even though Never. he had actually, to pay somebody to do it for him. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I actually, my personal, uh, my personal Facebook account got hot, hacked a couple of years ago. Oh. Best thing ever happened to me. <laughs> I feel so, you there. So I'm terrible about that. Um, but my website is myabilitytech.com. Um, 
you know, many of the projects that I'm working on currently are, are I'm working on a smart home currently for I Am Boundless down in Columbus. Cool. Um, where we're building a smart home with a unique twist. Most of the smart homes that I've, that I've been involved with and that I've seen in other spaces is like a tour. The, okay. You walk people through, they get a brief experience of what's in there and then they leave. Mm -hmm. What we're doing, what's unique here is we have a, a two-story apartment, one is upstairs loft and then a downstairs apartment, single bedroom apartment where the people can come and stay. It's going to be handled almost like a, a hotel. So the wow. caregiver can stay upstairs. Downstairs, we've got smart home or smart fridges, smart microwaves, uh, robots, vacuums. I mean, you name it. We're, we have decked this thing out um, in, in, in a try to identify a single ecosystem. So everything ties together real nice. And, um, just trying to give people a good taste without it looking space age. Gotcha. So some, I was just actually in the home yesterday and a guy walks through and he goes, this house don't look that smart to me. I said, cool. <laughs> That's the, That's yeah. the goal. <laughs> I don't want you walking going, whoa, this looks weird. No, I want you to walk in and say, this looks like home. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. that's what we wanted. We want individuals to feel like they're just like everybody else, that there's nothing strange or abnormal about their living arrangement. Mm. And uh, and so that's one of the projects, uh, working with some ICFs on trying to identify how, how can technology be beneficial within an ICF setting to help um, support the individuals better, to uh, foster more independence within those settings as well. Um, maybe even help those individuals get to the point where they can leave the ICF setting and go into more of a residential community setting. Yes. And um, so a lot of different projects like that, as I mentioned earlier about working with the department, um, assessing the developmental centers there, and uh, working with them to try and identify how can how can we move the needle forward in adoption of these services. Well, all that sounds awesome. Yeah. So. And ninety percent of the individuals that I service, I'm sure, would love to have an R two D two. So yeah. let's. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. That's, that's always everybody wants a robot. Right? I'm not sure what it's going to do <laughs> for them. But it's, it's cool. Yeah, it'll look cool. Yeah, and, it, and it's something we do have to be careful of. Is we don't we don't get sucked into the shiny object syndrome, is what I've always called it. Mm. Um, is oh, this would be cool. Well, what use to it? What do you actually need it for? Because it's cool. cool. <laughs> I don't know that that's really what we want to do. That. Not, I don't know if that's a good utilization. If you want to buy it on your own, yeah. that's fine. I'm not sure how they want to utilize dollars that way. So. Yeah. Well, All right. Well, thank you so much. And I learned we gotta a lot. Have, we got to have you back Pleasure. again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like we can go, yeah, we can go a long time with this. Absolutely. All right. I'd Thanks. love to. Thank you. Thank you.